Joe Rogan, the new king of the airwaves with his 20 million plus listeners of his podcast is coming under more fire lately first by cancel culture and now government officials and even medical professionals calling him dangerous for hosting doctors who don't follow the prevailing orthodoxy on COVID. Now the comedian being labeled right-wing conspiracy theorist and now calls to have him, <coughs> excuse me, deplatformed from Spotify. So here to discuss all of that is stand-up comedian, a friend of the show, our friend Kayvon is here. Uh, now, Kayvon, I'm going to have them keep the camera on you as I have a coughing fit here. But Kayvon, you have yes. now become my cancel culture expert. First, as a comedian yes. yourself, would you label Joe Rogan's brand of comedy right wing in any way? Well, you can't even get it out without choking on it because <laughs> Joe Rogan is not a right wing commentator. He is the middle of the road, liberal. He, if, if you know anything about his podcast, he brings people from all over to talk about various views. And that's the one thing the left really hates is a wide and open debate. It's really sad because we need more people to talk so that the more information, the better, and people can make better decisions with what's out there. So Joe Rogan does a great job, and I feel like every time I come on your show, it's just to defend the art of comedy and discussion and information, and that's what America was supposed to be all about, is freedom of speech. Yeah, you're right, Kayvon. This stuff literally has me choking up. Now, this is, this is going on uh, beyond cancel culture at this point. Um, you now have government officials and medical professionals stepping in, calling him dangerous. Is Joe Rogan really a threat to democracy? Well, when it's the kind of authoritarian uh, rulings that Joe Biden is trying to push on everyone, yes, Joe Rogan is by far the most dangerous person to what they're pushing. But it's funny because they don't like Joe Rogan when he puts this kind of view out there, but they love Seth Rogan. If you're just doing the math, <laughs> it's just based on, it's whoever's pushing their narrative at the moment. And it's interesting, uh, Rachel Maddow, I have exact quotes from her. The virus stops with every vaccinated person. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. There's not 300 doctors writing a letter saying, get her off the air, she lied. The CDC director a few months ago said vaccinated people don't carry the virus. We're now finding that's different. Our data from the CDC today suggests, um, you know, that, that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick, um, and, and that it's not just in the clinical trials, but it's also in real world data. So I see no problem with Joe Rogan bringing someone on who's explaining why that is and how he knew that was going to occur before the exploits figured it out. Yeah. Now, you are one of the few comedians who dare to still go on tour, hit the road. So you're actually in touch with folks across this country. Do Americans really want this sort of one sided narrative for, you know, for everyone to be in this echo chamber beating the same drum about COVID, about foreign policy, about war or whatever? Is that what the average American wants when you talk to them after your shows? It's very interesting. There's like a coordinated effort with mainstream media, big tech and big government. They're all on the same page and it's coming from the top down. But to your point, the average everyday American wants as much information as they can. They want to weigh out their options and they want to know the difference of if I have comorbidities, if I'm extremely overweight and if I'm at high risk maybe my medical decisions should be slightly different than someone that's younger. I always say people between the age of 30 and 50, we're not at a high risk of coronavirus because we used to go to the McDonald's Playland. We already caught every virus known to man. It's, <laughs> we used to swim in balls for 20 minutes at, at a fast food restaurant. We're going to be good. That is true. I was I was one of those kids, and I used to make myself sick on that spinning ride, you know, where you spin yourself and you throw the other kids off. That was always my jam. Absolutely. Oh, you weren't supposed to throw the other kids off. You were a little aggressive there, I got to say. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Now, yeah. with the doctors, <laughs> the scientists, um, now you have government officials calling to, for them to place, for Spotify to place limits on Rogan's speech, um, or even yes. for you, do you worry that your form of art or comedy is going to get stifled? And what would that mean for society at large if 
comedians get silenced. I'm proud of Joe Rogan because he saw the writing on the wall. My YouTube channel has been kind of dampened down. They call that a shadow ban where you're not reaching your own 350,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. But he knew that was coming and he signed a deal with Spotify. $100 million multi-year deal. He is now in a protected bubble. He's just lobbing grenades from outside of the Google Apple universe. And that's very, very good because a guy like me, I'm just a, I'm just there as a punching bag. So uh, Joe, if you can hear me, I want a Spotify deal too, please. I'll, I'll be, I'll be good. But yeah, it, it really is. You have to um, be protected from this and it will hurt comedy. Joe is canceling his Canada dates because yeah. they have various mandates that he doesn't want to follow as someone who has survived COVID and he has the antibodies. And they're saying, no, we still want you to do all these additional measures. You saw Djokovic had that problem in Australia to play tennis as the number one seed. And my whole thing is, if we're worried about the virus, make sure the person coming in doesn't have the virus. If you have the vaccine and the virus is within you, that's worse than a guy who tests free and clear, let him in the country, let him tell his jokes. Yeah, good thing I caught you before DC crackdown on all of this stuff too came on. So it was good to see you here uh, yes. what, two weeks ago. Thank you so much uh, for always carving out some time to weigh in on this stuff. My cancel culture expert, comedian Kayvon, thank you. Until I'm canceled, I'll be here. <laughs> thank you.